Hey everyone, this is Adam Yurchik recording for TCGPlayer.com. I'm here recording round two of my Lorwyn flashback draft on Magic Online. I lost the die roll, so I'm on the draw, and I have a hand without black, but I do have two islands and a broken ambitions and a couple of Sentinels of Glenelendra. This hand's close. I, I want to keep this hand because I can cast broken ambitions and clash which gives me one card deeper towards black mana and sentinels of glenelandra is one of my better cards i think that this hand has all the makings of a winner and i'll just have to take my chances there is a swamp so that's awesome i'll just lead on that and i don't have a fairy here and if my opponent plays an x1 creature i believe i'm just going to pepper smoke it and then keep up bro gro broken ambitions for the next turn and be in pretty good shape. So yeah, I'll just cast Pepper Smoke. Kind of hurts to use a card when I don't have a fairy in play and I don't get max value, but I just have to take it out. Keep my life total up. And keep my broken ambitions. So here... I'm just going to cast Nameless Inversion, take that out. I could possibly eat it with Sentinels, but that's probably true of most of his creatures. This way I also don't take any damage and I get to Broken Ambition Sim in this spot. I'm actually just going to eat that with Sentinels of Gwenelundra. I don't care about that card he just played. I want to keep Broken Ambitions for something that might actually beat me. We played Moonglove Extract, no problem. It just trades for a fairy. He attacks, give him flying. I'm going to play the Sentinels. Hopefully block his creature, destroy it, and then force him to use Moonglove Extract, giving me a nice two for one. And then leaving me in the driver's seat with all kinds of action. And him low on resources. So it looks like he actually has a trick. Which is a worst case scenario, but... There's nothing we can really do. I'll just pass it back. And I'll try again this turn. Plays a wise and sun. I'm just going to block with Sentinels of Glenlendra and then pepper smoke his creature. Put a block on before damage. I'll pepper smoke, forcing him to use his Moonglove extract. He does use it, and we do trade. Now I'll play Night Nightshade Stinger. I'll play Ring Skipper. Now I have Spell Stutter up and Broken Ambitions. I should be in pretty good shape. I could have countered his. Kinsbell with their broken ambitions and this game would have played out a little bit differently probably would have worked out a little bit better for me I exposed myself to that trick unfortunately and I, I don't hate the play but it didn't work out as well as it could have I could have ha played the Sentinels end of turn and then possibly countered his wise and send with spell stutter or forced him to use the moon glove on spell stutter now here I am with another broken ambitions they're not necessarily doing a lot for me. They could actually become dead if he draws more land. So I don't know how I feel about that decision. But I am in a favorable spot, so it is what it is. More land? Not the worst thing for me.
more land for him. More land for me. So I'm winning this race. Would certainly be winning more with a Sentinels. I think I just got a little bit greedy. Knowing Kithkin, they don't really have a lot of high-end cards. He could have had a Cloud Goat Ranger, but probably Broken Ambitions there was a nice tempo play. I'm going to counter this. So with so many Broken Ambitions, I suppose I could actually mill this guy out, potentially. Or my, my deck has that ability if I play against a control deck. So I'll bottom that. He showed a Kinsbell Skirmisher. Another land for me. And I will play it. In order to win this race, I have to counter everything. I can't afford to let him get a creature into play. He does attack. I do take it. Okay, Silver Guild Dowser could be exactly what I need. I get to slip it into play, still keep Broken Ambitions up for the most part. He casts Next Snap. I can counter for five right here and then play Dowser. I think I have to take my chances, or I mean take my chance to just do it. Keep my clock up to its maximum. Bottom the Swamp, it does let him clash. He gets to clash and draw a card before me, but no worries. going to take it and hopefully this race is won perfect so he casts the gold meadow harrier but because he goes to two this turn he is still going to take that damage he can only tap one of them and then take two to zero but there's marsh flitter off the top that should well seal the game That does that, okay. So that's awesome. I'm on the draw against a very aggressive deck. I believe that counter spells are not so good. Deep Tread Marrow, just a two mana creature that can block, I think is fine. I'm gonna bring that in and cut a Broken Ambitions. Otherwise, I think this is fine. Final Revels could be awesome against him. We saw Sentinels was pretty good. And Turtle Shell Changeling is actually a nice blocker against him. I like where my deck's at. Against him, really nothing to change besides getting that deep tread in. Really just as a blocker. And... I would cut this other ambitions, but I really have nothing else to put in, and one is absolutely fine. Could also maybe cut the ambitions for a trickery since he did see it and he could play around it, but that's not really, I don't know if that's wise, because it's you can't play around it all the time even if he wants to, and I don't want to be able to not cast it. And also the fact that I can ambitions on turn two is a very real thing. This hand's really heavy in land. I don't really want to get flooded out again. This hand looks looks pretty decent, but I don't think this is actually good enough. Five lands is rough. My curve ends at four. I have to mulligan this. This just does not have enough action to win. He did mulligan, so the fact that I have Thieving Sprite's pretty cool. 
I do have ambitions to, to stave them off early, but I just do not think this is good enough. I'm going to maul. This hand's pretty similar, but I'm, I'm going to keep this. I'm not going to go to five. This hand might be a bit worse because I don't have the sprite to make him discard. But on the other hand, Spell Stutter Sprite could create some value, and Dream Spoiler Witches is awesome. That's the sort of card that could take over the game. And actually, Dream Spoiler Witches is quite good against this opponent. He leads on a 2 2 into a Kinsmail, making it a 3 3. So I'm going to be at 17 and facing off, facing down two two twos. This will be rough. This one will be hard. But there's a second Dream Spoiler Witches, so I see light at the end of the tunnel. Nameless Inversion would be awesome. So there's Pepper Smoke. If I can survive, I can win this game. Absolutely brutal. I'm going to play Spell Sputter, Spell Stutter Sprite so I can block and Pepper Smoke something next turn. And th that way if I draw another spell I can cast it. And hopefully he just uh, doesn't have a one drop. So I'll put the block down. Pepper Smoke, I have to do it now because I need a fairy in play to draw a card. He casts Surge of Thought Weft. Thought he might have that. And now we're forced to block with Dream Spoiler Witches. Okay, we drew Eye, Eye Blight's Ending. So now if we draw Pepper Smoke next turn, in theory, we could stabilize this board. His draw was just perfect. Rune Stalactite. Makes it every creature type. So it'll turn off Eye Blight's ending, so I have to do it in response. Now I'm really in trouble because even Pepper Smoke doesn't stabilize. And that will will do it. I suppose I can take a look at his last card. All right, so go to the next game. I could definitely see the value of Deep Tread Marrow as a blocker. And I'll run that back. I'll play first. I'll keep this. I have the Marrow as a blocker. I have Dream Spoiler Witches to take over the game. And I have Gl Sentinels of Glenelandra to hopefully ambush something. His deck's awesome. He doesn't have the one drop this game, so that makes a world of difference. I did draw land, so hopefully those stop. He plays a Kithkin Greatheart, so I can block that with the Marrow. I will just sit back on defense. Although that's one I can kill with Dream Spoiler Witches, just with one spell. So that's a good one to... I'm going to counter the Moonglove Extract because it kills my Dream Spoiler Witches. This would be a good one to not kill and then kill with Dream Spoiler if I could. But I want to keep my life total up. Mall Drifter, boom, on top of my library. The Great Heart is also a one, also a card that I could block with Sentinels and kill it even if he has Surge. 
He doesn't attack, so I'll attack him. And I'll cast Dream Spoiler Witches. And then next turn I can cast Sentinels and kill his Great Heart. He casts Kinsbell Balloonist. Pretty good. So I could attack with with Dream Spoiler Witches. But if he has and then he won't block because of pepper smoke, but if he's a smart player, he'll know that I can just pepper smoke on his turn and trade off for it. So I wouldn't do that. I'm just going to pass. I'm not going to attack. I'm just going to pass. Keep up Sentinels. Don't play Marsh Flitter yet. He pumps Balloonist. Attacks. Now I can attack, or now I could, when he attacks, I could uh, shrink it and block. But I think a more head up play is to just kill his 2 1. That way I don't get wrecked by his anthem. And I'm confident I can beat his balloonist with my marsh flitter. So I'm not going to set myself up for disaster. Could have also shrunk it, double blocked, and then beaten a anthem. But I'd rather keep my creatures in play. I'm gonna turn up the aggression here because I have marsh flitter. And if I can get him to trade, that's fine with me because that means I'm not getting wrecked by the anthem Marsh Flitter does a good job of blocking his flyers so he can definitely tap it we'll see what he does He lets me block, so I'll block. I'll sack a goblin, make a 3-3. If he has an anthem, it's just an even trade. If he has two anthems, then that is what it is. So he has Triclopian Sight. And no anthem. So we, we actually get a nice value there. Summon the school. Pretty nasty card, actually, but we should be able to handle that with our flyers. We definitely want to keep this Deep Tread Marrow back on defense now, though. Sentinels of Glenelendra, that should be game. That's awesome. I'll send this Goblin, because I'd like to trade with Merfolk, because I don't want to let him get some of the school going. Deep Tread, on the other hand, I do not want to trade that for a 1-1 when I can use it to block his Kinsbale. So I will send the Goblin. And then I'm going to just pass now. I would have cast Muldrifter, but with Sentinels I can kill his Gold Meadow Harrier, and that should be good enough. I could have casted an Upkeep and played around uh, Anthem, but I'd rather do this and ambush him. And I actually get the trigger before the creature resolves, so he cannot tap the sentinel. He did draw an anthem, though. That's extremely nasty. So I could have played around that. Perhaps I should have. But I think he's just dead. So yeah, I can just block his 2-2 uh, two -two with the 2-3. I cannot block his 3-3 three -three with the 2-1, though. I'll just cast Small Drifter here. See what I draw. I draw Nameless Inversion. And now that is enough to kill him. One, two, three, four, five, six. I will cast Nameless Inversion before blocks. Kill his blocker. He takes six. And I take the match. So thank you for watching, and please join me for.
the finals round three.